The dust motes hang out lowly throughout the air. And I lie in my bed heavy, weighed with care. I ponder asking questions which I prior hadn't dared. So out amongst the motes in sunlight, I do note, My dear, we haven't come much farther since we've started here. And I've come to find it all rather unfair that the time that always you beg that I share is the very exact same thing which you want. <laughs> the words charge through the air and disrupt the hush. Objectively, I view them as a sign of my mistrust. Responding to the question only asked through implication, she delivers to me an answer with no sense of hesitation. Well, my dear, you know as well as I, I try and give you time. But I find myself indulgent now in things far more divine. The words charge through the air, disrupt the hush. My heavy, belligerent heart begins to rush, hoping to proceed slowly despite my truculent distress. I subdue irritation, pull my focus to my breath, and though my hands big purpose of their own, they maintain latent across my chest. But anger, cold ideas spill down messy off my tongue, and they all ricochet off, close out ears. You listen to no one. And I listen to what we've been building, begin to shake and become undone. There are things here we've created that come to manifest from fear. And all the dust that settled on the spider webs we've spun become cause for us to notice that they're blocking out the sun and so for things to settle back into the places they've begun. I speak, seek to speak to you now from a place which is sincere. Basically, I work, I'm, a, I'm a physio, and I work on the wards, and I meet a lot of families who are like, like getting up there in age, and one of them has dementia, and one of them doesn't. And it's very moving, I think, to see the relationship, how that must have evolved from what you imagine it was like when they are young, and, you know, just falling in love, and, um, and now they're taking the love. It's so different, and I've never known that kind of love in my life. Um, so. I decided to write a love poem for somebody who's actually my very, very dear friend who's not here tonight because he thinks he's got better things to do. But um, if anybody knows Lawrence, this is a poem or an imaginary world where, um, where he has dementia. Because um, I, th I can imagine him being in my life for a long time. Um, so here we go. Mad old poet, you've gone to sleep and slipped soft fully away in the night. Gone hazy and gray and gentler and sweeter with each passing year of your life. These days your gaze will still hold mine completely, though your towers tangled in weeds. The brave man who once showed such as not can defeat him lies now closer to the bugs you will feed. The gaiety of wine, full on evenings encroaching, on mind, now a new kind of mad. I'll hold still your hand, your bodily presence. Still happy, but I admit that the loss of you is tragedy. With tears to your spirit, I now water my garden. Even though you sit still by my side, the circle of life spins chaotic. How ironic. You fed the earth before even you've died. <laughs> 